Hey, hello and welcome. In this video segment, I'm going to review the geometry for Mill Lesson 1. Now, Lesson 1 just deals with geometry creation. In later lessons, we'll move into toolpath creation. Now, on the screen is the completed geometry for Mill Lesson 1. Now, X0, Y0 is located at the lower left corner of the part. That's the intersection of these two lines. Now the x-axis runs from left to right, the y-axis runs vertically on the screen and the z-axis is flying out towards you. Now to create the lines that make up this part I'm going to use create line endpoint and input the absolute coordinates of the endpoints of the lines. I'm just going to close up create line endpoint. Now coupled with this I'll use the auto cursor to snap to the endpoints of the lines. Now absolute means the x and y coordinates all relate to the origin, the x0, y0 position. Now as only geometry will be created in this lesson you can turn the display of the Toolpaths Manager off. So that's this white area over on the left of the screen. Now what I'm going to do is move up and open up View and then first on the list I'm going to click on Toggle Toolpaths Manager. Now we've still got the Solids Manager up so I'm going to get rid of that as well. I'm going to bop back into View and then second on the list here Toggle Solids Manager and it's all gone. Now if you want them to come back I'm going to go Alt O on my keyboard and there's the Toolpath Manager back again. Alt O will make it disappear. Alt O toggle it back. Now you can also click on the X button, this close button to turn off the display of the Toolpath Manager. Now this completes this video. Thanks for watching. In the next video I'll start to create the geometry. Hello and welcome. In this video we'll take a cruise around Mastercam's graphical user interface. Now the grey graphics window is where part files are displayed. On the left is the toolpaths manager. When we eventually start to create toolpaths the toolpaths will be stacked up in this white space. Now I'm moving over into the grey area, the graphics area what I'm going to do is right mouse click I'm just going to slide on down and I'm going to click on isometric now also the keyboard shortcut is alt plus seven on your keyboard so I'm going to click on isometric to get an isometric view of this part I'm going to right mouse click once again and now I'm going to unzoom 0.8 and you can see the shortcut for that is alt plus F2 I'm going to right mouse click one more time and now click on top. Let's right mouse click again and this time I'll click on fit. Now fit displays the geometry to fill as much of the graphics area as possible. Now just above the graphics area is the ribbon bar. Now ribbon bars activate when we move into many Mastercam functions. So what I'm going to do is move on up. I'm going to open up Create. I'm going to slide on down, go into Line, and there are several ways of creating lines here. I'm going to click on Endpoint, and now the ribbon bar shows up for Create Line Endpoint. Now over on the right hand side, I'm just going to click on this OK green check mark to exit. Now typically each Mastercam function has its own unique ribbon bar. Let's move to the top of the screen and remove and review the menu bar and check out some of its content. So starting over on the left, what I'm going to do is move into file. So this is where we can go to open file, save file, save as, etc. Now check out the icons to the left of new and open. 
If I escape, you'll see these on the toolbar as well. So there's new, open, and save. Let's go back into file. And what I'm going to do is click on open. I'm going to open up this drop down menu here. And this shows you the different types of file types we can open up in Mastercam. Now, HLE, that's Home Learning Edition Mastercam software users, it saves Mastercam's files with an EMCX extension. So some of the files we can open are AutoCAD files, SolidWorks, Autodesk Inventor files, etc. Just going to take it back to Mastercam, all Mastercam files, and just click on Cancel. Let's now go and check out Edit. Now in Edit, at the very top, we've got Undo and Redo. They're not activated yet because I haven't done anything. Cut, Copy, Paste. Let's check out Trim Break. So in Trim Break, we've got many different options here. I'm going to go into Trim break extend now once we go into trim break extend we've got trim one trim two entities trim three divide delete and trim to a point so we'll be getting into these trimming functions in later lessons so over on the right just going to click on the OK button to exit I'm going to go in and draw a line now so up on the toolbars I'm going to open up this drop down and there are the different options that we've got for creating lines. I'm going to click on create line endpoint and I'm prompted on the screen to specify the first endpoint. And what I'm going to do is pick a point here and this visual cue that you see on the screen that allows me to snap to the center of that circle and I'm just going to move on over and there's that visual cue again that allows me to snap to the center of that circle. I'm going to pick that point and now up on the ribbon bar I'm going to click on OK. So let's go back up into edit now and now you can see undo is activated. Now the keyboard shortcut for undo is Control Z. Now by default Mastercam can save up to 2 billion undo redo events. So I hope that covers all your undo needs. Let's go and check out view now. So in view we've got things like fit which we used earlier on, repaint, zoom window, unzoom 0.8. I'm going to unzoom previous 0.5 to shrink the display down. I'm going to go back into view and click on fit. So that puts the geometry on the screen as big as it can get. So let's go back into view. Now what we can do is toggle the toolpath manager. So I'm going to click on it. So the toolpath manager is gone and we still got the solids manager on the screen. I'm going to go back into view and click on toggle solids manager. So they both disappeared. Now another shortcut on your keyboard Alt O will turn it back on again. Alt O turns it off. I'm going to click Alt O again. Now the toolpath uh, manager window, I'm just going to click on this right pane and we can stretch it out. I'm going to stretch it back in again. Next up, let's go and check out Analyze. So we can analyze entity properties, position, what I'm going to do is select distance. Now the prompt on the screen, select point or curve, I can just pick on that, move it around. If I right mouse click, let's click small font. I got bad eyes, I can't see that. So I'm going to right mouse click on it again and I need the large font. So select point or curve. What I'm going to do is find out the distance between the center of this circle and the center of this guy up here. So I'm going to pick the center of this circle. Well, there's that visual cue that pops up that identifies that I'm going to snap to the center. So I'm going to pick that point. And then I'm prompted to select a second point. I'm going to move on up here. 
and then click on the center of that circle. So there's my visual cue snapped to the center. Let's see what we've got in the Analyze Distance dialog box. So on the left, we've got the X, Y, and Z for that first point. So that first point was located at X0, Y0. Now the gray dashed lines here are the grid, and we'll be looking at that in a moment. And then over on the right hand side, the X, Y, and Z coordinates of that second point that I picked. Down below, we've got the angle and then the distance between those two circles is one inch. Now at the very bottom, we have the delta x, y, and z. That's the incremental value from this hole up to that second hole. I'm just gonna close this up now. Let's go check out create now. So this is where we'll be creating the geometry for our parts. Let's move into create line. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, a whole bunch of different ways of creating lines. I'm going to click on Create Line Endpoint. Now, the prompt specify the first endpoint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move on over and I'm going to pick the center of this circle. So there's that visual cue that allows me to snap to the center. I'm going to pick it and then I'm going to move on over and there's the visual cue that allows me to snap to the center of that circle. I'm going to move up to the ribbon bar and on the right hand side I'm going to click on the apply button to fix this entity. So once again I'm prompted to specify the first endpoint. I'm going to move up and this horizontal line at the top as I get close to the middle there is the visual cue for midpoint. I'm going to pick it, I'm going to move on down and over on the right hand side when I get close to the vertical line there's that visual cue for midpoint. I'm going to pick it. I'm going to click on OK. I'm just going to move on up and I'm going to click on undo, undo to get rid of those two lines. Next to create we have solid. So these are all the tools that we can use to create solid model geometry. So for example extrude, revolve, sweep, loft, etc. Let's have a look in model prep. Now many users import solids from other systems. These tools make the process of model preparations easier. Let's go next door now and check out Xform. So listed here are the tools we can use to transform geometry. Translate, translate 3D, mirror, rotate, scale, etc. And next door in machine type. Now we can set up specific parameters for a particular machine tool. Be it a vertical mill or horizontal machine, lathe, wire or router. Next door, I'm going to open up Toolpaths. So in the first few lessons, we'll be creating some geometry. And then when we get into Toolpaths, we'll start off with Drilling. Move into Contour, Toolpaths, Pocket, Face, etc. Let's go and check out Screen now. I'm going to open up Screen. Now I'm going to move down and move into Grid Settings. Now previously I went in and activated the grid. I've got visible grid turned on and if you move down to the bottom I've got the size set to 1. Now the grey dashed lines, that's the grid over here, the centre of the grid is at the origin X0, Y0. Let me click on OK. Now the shortcut to get back in there is Alt G on your keyboard. Let me go ahead now and change the size of the grid to 2 and then click on OK so the grid now is 2 inches wide let's go back into grid so Alt G on my keyboard I'm going to take it back to 1.0 now up at the top active grid is not activated if you do activate it you can then snap to these grid points on the grid. 
I'm going to deactivate it and then click on OK. Next door to screen, let's open up settings. Let's move into configuration. Now in configuration we can set Mastercam startup to default values and manage the configuration files that store these values. For example, on the left, over here in screen, if I click on grid settings, I've previously gone in and set up my visible grid and set the size to one. So now every time I launch Mastercam, the grid will be activated and at a size of one. I'm going to click on OK. Let's go back into settings and next up, I'm going to click on customize. So we can create, delete and customize the Mastercam toolbars and menus. Just going to click on cancel. Let's go back into settings again. Load workspace. So Mastercam workspaces provide you with a personalized Mastercam interaction layout such as toolbar displays, graphic window context menu options and keyboard shortcuts assigned to commonly use Mastercam functions. Now at the very end we have help and there's a separate video just dedicated to help. Now on the edge of the screen are a variety of toolbars. Now over on the right of the screen is the MRU. I'm just going to click on it and move it over. I've undocked it. So MRU stands for Most Recently Used Toolbar and it stacks up the icons of the most recently used functions that we've used. So the last thing I was in was Customize, Configuration, and Screen Grid Settings. I'm just going to click on the top and then just dock this back in there again. So that's the MRU. Now let's move, up, move over over on the left here. So I'm just running up and down the Sketcher toolbar here. Now if I right mouse click, I can move into Customize and I also can load workspaces from here as well. Let's move into creating a line using line endpoint but this time I use the toolbar so over on the left here if I open up this drop down there's our different options there for creating lines I'm going to click on create line endpoint. Now I'm prompted to specify the first endpoint and before I input any X, Y and Z values, just want to take note, down at the lower left of the screen, the X and Y, so X axis is going from left to right, Y up and down, and Z is shooting out of the screen. Now this time, I'm going to use the Auto Cursor ribbon bar. Now what I'm going to do, this is the Auto Cursor ribbon bar I'm running up against here. I'm just going to pick it and undock it. So that's the order cursor ribbon bar and we can use this to input X, Y and Z coordinates. So earlier on when prompted to specify the first endpoint I just use my mouse to pick points on the screen. This time I'm going to click in the space for X and what I'm going to do is enter 0.5 for the X. I'm going to hit the tab button on my keyboard. Now for the Y I'm going to input 0.5 and hit the tab key again and the Z is just going to stay at 0 and I'm going to hit enter. Now as you can see there's the start off of my line. I'm just going to move the auto cursor ribbon, the auto cursor toolbar rather, back to its original place. Now I'm prompted to specify the second endpoint. Once again up on the order cursor I'm going to click in the space for X and I'm going to input 1.25 for X. I'm going to hit the tab and for the Y 1.25. I'm going to tab again. Now the Z I'm going to leave as is and hit enter. So there's our line. Over on the right hand side I'm going to click on the apply button to fix this entity. Let's create another line. I'm going to go up to the order cursor ribbon bar 
and over on the right hand side I'm going to click on this icon fast point and what I'm going to type in for the X and Y is minus 0 0.25 comma so that's the X value minus 0 0.25 that's the Y and hit enter so there's the start off for my line now for the end point, this second end point, I'm going to go up again and click on fast point. And this time I'm going to type in minus 1.0, that's my x value, and minus 1.0 for the y, and hit enter. So there's that line. I'm going to move up and click on the apply button to fix this entity. So the auto cursor comes alive whenever Mastercam prompts you to select a position in the graphics window. Now what I'm going to do to specify this first endpoint, I'm going to move over to this circle and there's the visual cue that allows me to snap to the center of this circle. So I'm going to pick it. Now let me show you now the auto cursor overrides in the drop down menu. I'm going to open up this drop down and I'm going to select midpoint. Now the prompt changes to select line arc, spline or solid edge and what I'm going to do is move on over and pick this vertical line and watch how it snaps to the midpoint of that line. I'm going to move on up and click on OK. Now on the top left of the screen I'm going to undo once, twice, three times to get rid of those lines. Let's look at the general selection ribbon bar. What I'm going to do is undock it and move it down so you can check it out. So this is the general selection ribbon bar. This is a great tool when you need to selectively pick up entities on the screen. Now what I'm going to do is click on the All button. Now over on the left the Select All dialog box shows up. I'm just going to slide on down and activate Entities. And what I want to do is select all the circles on the screen, the arcs. So I'm going to click on Arcs. I'm just going to move this dialog box up and then click on the OK button. So as you can see it's selected all those circles. So I can go ahead now and click on the delete and delete them all. Now I'm going to get out of this by hitting the unselect all button. So general selection toolbar very useful. I'm just going to dock it back again. Now over on the left what I'm going to do is close up the toolpaths manager. I'm just going to click on the close button here. I'm going to go ahead now and delete some entities. So I'm going to move up to the top of the screen, click on Delete Entities. Now on the General Selection ribbon bar, if I open up this drop down, we've got a series of options In, Out, In Plus, Out Plus and Intersect. Let me leave it on In and what I'm going to do is draw a window around a series of entities. So I've picked a point and then I'm going to pick a point over here. Now before I pick I've got it set up within so it will only select entities that are completely inside this window. So I'm going to pick and as you can see the only entities that were completely inside were those two circles. Now I'm just going to move up to the right unselect and I'm going to hit the escape button to get out of delete entities. Now over in the lower right corner the scale and unit is displayed and shows whatever you're working with inch or a metric part and how many units are displayed per inch or millimeter. This gives you an idea of the size of the part you're working with. Now at the bottom of the screen is the status bar and we can access a variety of functions here. We can modify attributes, colors, levels, groups, etc. Let me go in and change the wire frame color. So at present it's green. I'm going to click on red and then click on 
OK. Now that concludes our tour around the Mastercam's interface. A lot more to come. See you soon and thanks for watching. Hello and welcome. In this video we'll review the coordinate system, absolute coordinates and relative coordinates. Absolute means the values are in relation to the origin x0, y0, z0. Relative, on the other hand, is the distance from one point to the next point, an incremental distance. On the screen is a 3 by 3 square with the origin, that's x0, y0, z0, at the center of the square. Now, I selected the function key F9 previously to show the coordinate axes. That's these grey lines on the screen. Now you can hit F9 again to hide these, but I'm going to leave them displayed. Now if you look to the lower left corner, the x-axis is from left to right, y-axis is going up and down, and the z-axis is coming out the screen straight towards you. Now what I'm going to do is right mouse click and get an isometric view. So there you can see the Z is going up and down. I'm going to right mouse click again and then get a top view. Now what I'm going to do in a moment is open up another file and we're going to create these four blue circles. Now to kick off we'll create the circles using absolute coordinates. Then I'm going to do a few undos and then we'll recreate, recreate them again but this time I'll recreate them using relative coordinates. Before I open up the other file and create these four circles, just, let's just let re review where they're located. Now x0, y0 is the center of the plate. This circle in the upper right quadrant is x positive, y positive. That's the center point. Now over on the left hand side, this circle, which is in the upper left quadrant, the x value at the center is going to be x negative, and the y will be y positive. Now in the lower left, the center of this circle will be x negative and y negative. Now in the lower right quadrant, the x at the center will be x positive, and the y will be negative. Now the distance between the centers of these circles are an inch and a half. So this particular circle in the upper right quadrant, the center is at x 0.75, that's positive 0.75, and the y, same thing, is 0.75. Let's go ahead now and open up another file and we'll recreate these four circles. I'm just going to move up to the top left corner, click on open, and I'm going to open this file here, coordinates. So let's start to create these four circles. I'm going to move into create. Next up is arc, and what I'm going to use is circle center point. Now up on the ribbon bar, what I'm going to do is click in the space for radius, and the radius is 0.25. I'm also going to click on the radius icon to lock this value in. Now I'm prompted to enter the center point. So the first circle that we're going to put in is this upper right quadrant here. So the X is going to be positive and the Y is going to be positive as well. So up on the altar cursor, I'm going to click in the space for X and input 0.75 going to hit the tab key and now we're transported over to the Y. I'm going to input 0 0.75. I'm going to tab over and the Z I'm just going to leave at 0. I'm going to hit enter now and there's our first circle. Over on the right side of the ribbon bar I'm going to click on apply. Now for the next circle it's in this upper left quadrant so the X is going to be negative and the Y is going to be positive. So once again, 
I'm going to click in the space for X minus 0 0.75 going to hit the tab now the tab the Y rather is 0 0.75 going to hit the tab and I'm going to leave the Z at 0 so there's our second circle over on the right going to click on apply now for the third circle in this lower left quadrant X is going to be negative and the Y is going to be negative as well so I'm going to move up to the auto cursor and this time I'll click on the fast point icon and input negative 0 0.75 that's our X value I'm going to put in a comma and for the Y same thing 0 0.75 that's minus so X and Y both minus 0 0.75 I'm going to hit enter and there's our circle in the lower left quadrant over on the right hand side I'm going to click on apply now for our last guy in this lower right quadrant X is going to be positive and Y is going to be negative so once again I'm going to go up on the order cursor ribbon bar click on fast point I'm going to input 0 0.75 that's that positive value for the X comma and then negative 0 0.75 for the Y and hit enter so we're looking good so next up we're going to move over to the right hand side and click on the OK check mark what I'm going to do now is undo these last three circles and then create the circles again but this time I'm going to be using relative coordinates instead of absolute so I'm going to move up to the top left of the screen and click on the undo button once twice three times now I'm going to move over to the MRU the most recently used toolbar and I'm going to click on create circle center point so as you can see our radius is still locked in and I'm prompted to enter the center point what I'm going to do is move up to the order cursor ribbon bar and open up these overrides and then down at the very bottom what I'm going to do is pick relative now as you can see the prompt changes enter a known point or change to a long mode well my known point is the center of this circle so there's my visual cue that allows me to snap to the center of this circle so I'm going to pick it now the prompt changes to enter rectangular or polar coordinates now the distance from the center of this circle to the center of the circle in the upper left quadrant is negative 1.5 in the X and Y is 0 so up on the ribbon bar I'm going to click in the space for Delta and input minus 1.5 that's our X value comma 0 in Y and hit enter so there's our circle our second circle using relative coordinates now I'm going to move on up and click on the apply button now the next circle I'm going to put in is this circle in the lower quadrant this lower left now the incremental distance the relative distance from the center of this circle to the circle below is x0 and y is negative 1.5 so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to move up to the order cursor ribbon bar I'm going to click on relative I'm prompted for a known point I'm going to pick this circle here the there's the visual cue that allows me to snap to the center now for the rectangular I'm going to click in the Delta column so the X is 0 comma and the Y is negative 1.5 I'm going to hit enter and there it is so there's our next circle created using relative over on the right hand side of the ribbon bar I'm going to click on apply now for our last one in the lower right quadrant so the distance between our circles is 1.5 now once again I'm going to move up click on relative I'm prompted for a known point I'm going to pick this point here now the distance between this circle and this circle over here is 1.5 in X comma and zero in Y and I'm going to hit enter and there it is 
I'm going to move up to the upper right corner now and click on OK. So we've created these four circles using absolute coordinates to kick off and then when we undid these last three circles we recreated them using relative coordinates where we input the distance between centers. Now that completes this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be talking with you soon. Hello and welcome. In this video segment I'll create the geometry for mill lesson one. Now on the screen is the completed geometry for lesson one. In a moment I'll start a new file and create the geometry from scratch. Now just a reminder x0 y0 is at the lower left corner of the part. That's the intersection of these two lines. So let's get started now and create a new file. So what I'm going to do is move up to the top left corner, click on file and then first on the block there I'm going to click on new. Looking good. Now I've already been in and gone to settings, load workspace and I've loaded up for 2D toolpath. Now a workspace is a saved personalized master cam interaction layout such as toolbar displays, graphic window context menu options and keyboard shortcuts assigned to commonly used master cam functions. So we're all set up for a 2D toolpath. Now the machine type is set to generic mill. So I'm going to change this. So what I'm going to do is over on the left hand side of the screen, I'm going to click on the plus sign. And then next up, what I'm going to do is click in files. Now at the very top in the machine toolpath copy, it's set to mill default. Now I want to change that. I'm going to click on the replace button. And then what I'm going to do is pick the generic has and it's this four axis mill right here. So looking good, I'm going to click on open. Now, as you can see, it's changed to generic has four axis mill. So everything's looking good here. I'm going to click on the OK button. Now, next up, let's go and turn the grid on and that will keep us in check on where the X0, Y0 is located. So what I'm going to do is move into settings and then number one on the, on the list here, I'm going to click on configuration. Now over on the left, just below screen, I'm going to click on grid settings. Now moving over to the right, I'm going to activate just the visible grid and I'm just going to slide over to the right here and I'm going to change the size to 1.0. So all is looking good. Now I'm going to click on the plus sign here, the apply button. And now I'm prompted save all current settings to configuration file. You bet. I'm going to click on the yes button. Now we're done here. I'm going to click on the green check mark for OK. Now over on the left, the toolpath manager is open. Now this particular part we're working on, we're just working on the geometry. So let's turn off the display of this. So what I'm going to do is move on up into view and then click on toggle toolpath manager. Now the solids manager is still open. So once again, back into view and then second on the list, I'm going to click on toggle solids manager. And if you do want to turn it on, you can just click Alt O on your keyboard, Alt O will turn off the display. So all is looking good. Let's get started with the geometry. So first up, let's move into create line and number one on the list here, create line endpoint. Now we're prompted to specify the first endpoint. So before we move on, let me just right mouse click over this prompt. So you can change the font size. I'm going to right mouse click again. I'm going to change it to large font. So we're prompted to specify the first endpoint. Now what I'm going to do is move over to the left. Now this is the auto cursor 
bar that I'm running up again uh, around here and what I'm going to do is click in the X value now for the start point of this line it's going to be X0 Y0 so what I'm going to do is type in 0 I'm going to hit the tab now we're transported over to Y I'm going to hit 0 on my keyboard and for the Z we're going to leave that at Z0 so this first endpoint X0 Y0 and Z0 and now I'm going to hit enter now as you can see we're now prompted to specify the second endpoint so what I'm going to do is once again I'm going to move up to the order cursor and click in the X value here now for the endpoint of this line in X it's 0 I'm going to hit the tab and our Y value is 5 going to hit the tab and the Z is going to stay at 0 just going to hit the enter button so there's our first line now what I'm going to do is move on up and click on apply now next up I'm going to move over to the left and at the very top here I'm going to click on the fit icon and now you can see all of our line there and now what I'm going to do is just slide over just a wee bit to the right and click on this guy unzoom 0.8 and that shrinks the screen down just a touch now next up I'm going to move this line I'm going to pan the display so what I'm doing right now is just hitting the right arrow key on my keyboard this is the left arrow key and I'm just going to move it over to the left so I'm just hitting the right arrow key so all is looking good now unzoom 0.8 reduces the size of display geometry to 80% of its current size now next up is line 2 so we're prompted to specify the first point now what I'm going to do is move on over and as I get close to the end of this vertical line you can see that visual cue and that visual cue denotes that I'm going to snap to the end point of this line and that's exactly what I want so I'm going to click on this guy now for the second point for the end point of this line same deal I'm going to move up to the order cursor I'm going to click in the X value section here and then what I'm going to input is 1.5 for the X I'm going to tab over now our Y value for this guy is 5.0 going to hit the tab and the Z is going to stay at 0 I'm going to hit the enter button so there's our second line looks good now on to line 3 so we're prompted specify the first endpoint so as we did before I'm going to move on up and there's that visual cue for endpoint going to pick on that guy now for the second endpoint going to click up in the X space and this next guy is X3 going to hit the tab button and Y is 3 going to hit the tab and I'll hit the tab one more time there we go there's our next line now on to line four so specify the first endpoint same as before gonna click so it snaps to the endpoint of that line there's that visual cue got it and now when I'm prompted to specify the second endpoint once again gonna click in the X space now I'm gonna input three for the X tab over here we are in the Y section and the Y value is 2.5 gonna hit the tab again so we're not changing the Z that's gonna stay as is and I'm gonna hit tab one more time and there's our line okay on to the next guy so specify the first endpoint gonna move on and pick this guy there's our visual cue for endpoint now we're moving over now once again let's go up into the X and the X coordinate is 5 going to hit the tab button and the Y is 2.5 
going to hit the tab and then hit the enter and there's our line looks good so once again specify the endpoint going to click on the endpoint of this line there's that visual cue got it for the second endpoint up here for the x value and now what I'm going to do is type in 5 that's our x value hit the tab and now for the y that's 3 hit the tab again and hit the tab one more time looking good now specify the first endpoint so I'm going to go down and pick the endpoint there's the visual cue now we're moving up here now so once again back up going to click in the x value and the x value is 6.5 going to hit the tab and the y is 5 going to hit the tab again nothing to change in the z going to hit the tab one more time so we're all looking good on to the next line specify the first endpoint going to click on there's the endpoint visual cue perfect going to click on it the prompt changes to the second endpoint. Once again, going to click up in the X field here, and I'm going to type in 8 for the X. Hit the tab button, and for the Y, we've got 5. Hit the tab again, and then one more time. So we're looking good. Now specify the first endpoint. Going to pick on the endpoint of that line. There's that visual cue. Got it. Once again, going to click up in the X value here. And the x value is 8. Going to tab over the y, big fat 0. Going to tab again and then hit enter. So we're looking good. One more line to go. I'm just going to move down now. And for this prompt, specify the first endpoint. There's a visual cue for endpoint. I'm going to pop back up and in the x value there, I'm going to input 0. Hit the tab button hit another zero hit the tab and one more tab again and we are looking good there's our last line there what I'm going to do is click on the OK button next up going to move up to the top of the screen over on the left hand side here going to click on the fit button so there's mill lesson one looks good now screen fit you can use this function to maximize your view of visible geometry in the graphics window when you use this function the system positions and sizes the display geometry to fill as much of the graphics area as possible so we're looking good let's go and save this file so I'm going to move up to the top left and click on file save as now for the name of this file I'm going to type in mill lesson dash one mill lesson dash one looks good and click on the save button now that completes this video thanks so much for watching and I'll be talking with you soon